Hey guys, it's a new week, which means I'm working on a new project. This week, I'm gonna tackle the third or actually second fabric that I bought a few weeks ago at the Knitting and Stitching Show. And you know it if you've seen that video. It's this beautiful checker print denim. It's a quite lightweight denim. It's not very thick, more like a canvas, I would say. And the plan is for this to become culottes. You know what culottes are. They're basically just very, very wide legged cropped trousers. And I already started to work on the pattern for this. The special thing about this trouser pattern is that there is going to be no inner leg seam to save myself sewing two seams, basically. And also because this fabric is so busy, the less seams we have in the legs, the better it's going to look. My initial idea was to have no seam on the outer leg side, but that for some reason was a bit too intimidating for me. So I stuck with the option of removing the inner legs. I've already cut out all of my pieces. I'm actually ready to go ahead and sew this beast. So let's jump straight in. So I went ahead and drafted a first iteration of the pattern. I then cut all of it from muslin to create a mock-up because I felt like removing the inner side seam was changing the structure of the pattern a little bit from what I know it to be like if there was a side seam. So I wanted to give it a try before I cut it from my real fabric. That didn't work, like <laughs> it, it did work and I fit into it, but it just didn't look very good because the crotch just wasn't right. So I went ahead and made changes to the pattern and then I cut it straight from my shell fabric without trying it a second time because I guess, I don't know, I felt wild. <laughs> so I'm now at a point where I'm ready to sew, so let's go. All right, all of the pieces are cut and fingers crossed that they will fit as well. This is basically my second go at the pattern after the first one flopped a bit and then I made changes and decided to cut it straight from my fabric because we live dangerously. So we have the main trouser pieces here, waistband up there, these are the pockets for the sides, this is the pocket for the back, and then I had this, which naturally just happened to be one of the cutoffs and I thought maybe I can use it somewhere else on the trousers, so those are all my pieces. Alright, before I take this to my sewing machine, I'm gonna do a few things. I cut these trousers so that the right side of the shell was facing out because I wanted to make sure I can align the checker somehow. Normally I wouldn't do that, normally I would fold it so that the right sides are facing each other to protect the shell. That wasn't necessarily possible here. So I'm gonna remove the pattern for starters. I've already marked the end of my darts here in the back on the inside with a removable fabric pen. So now I can go ahead and get the paper pattern out of the way. And now I need to make sure that the right sides are facing. Okay, now what I can go ahead and do is pin the crotch all the way around because this is, I think, the first thing I'm going to sew. I'm only going to do it so that the first quarter of the front crotch is closed because we need to leave this open to eventually get into the trousers. And I'm also going to go ahead and pin the darts in the back and then these are the first things I can go and sew. Alright, so the first step will be to sew the crotch seam. Alright, so I prepared my pockets here. As you can see, I turned them over, pressed them down and these little edges down here I fold it in a roughly 45 degree angle. And now I also have this one-sided interfacing, which I'm gonna pop on here to give it some extra security and hold all of this down and prevent the inside of the pocket from fraying. And now we can press it down. I'm gonna do that with high heat and a lot of steam. All right, now we have the inside nice and neat. And now I will search the top part, fold it over like this. And then we have a beautiful pocket from the outside that can be top stitched. So we have really crisp pockets now and they look like this on the inside. So I used two kinds of interfacing. The first one, as you saw, is one-sided and has fabric on the other side. And then now after folding that in so it cannot be seen from the outside up here, this overlap, I also put some fusible interfacing in here. So this is not coming apart when we grab in and out of the pocket with our hands. So a really nice and sturdy pocket, which can now be placed on the bum. So 
now that the back pockets are on, I'm gonna work on the front pockets. Trousers, all right. However, there are a few things that we will have to change. So there's gonna be a fly zip in the front, obviously. And here in the back, I hope you can see, they are too wide, gaping quite far. So I will have to take them in back here by like an inch about. Now this is unfortunate. I was hoping that this wouldn't happen, that the side pocket was quite so gaping, but we will only know how much they're gaping once everything's done. So what I will do, I still have some seam allowance down here that I will try to use to make the crotch a little longer. That should help. And then I take the back in. And once the trousers are a little bit lower and the waistband is attached, it should be okay. I'm not 100% happy with this, but it's definitely something I can work with. I'm actually at a point where I'm seriously considering removing the side pockets. It's just not working, I think. They're too gapy and it's not gonna make me feel good. I think when I have these like hip dips because the pockets are much less structurally sound than the rest of the side seam. So I think I will have to remove them. Okay, let's work on the fly zip. I have a few rectangles here, two to be exact, and the zipper. The rectangles are exactly as long, plus a bit of seam allowance, as the opening for the front of my trousers. So this fits along that opening. One of the rectangles is about eight centimeters wide, and again, as long as my opening, which for me is about 25. And then the second one is a little bit wider than the first one, it's 10 centimeters. So this one, the wider one, is gonna be halved like this. I'm gonna press this in a second. And this is gonna be the zipper facing, I believe is what this is called, which is on the inside of the trousers and keeps the zipper from rubbing your belly. And then this one is the one that is going to flip over on the other side where we are gonna stitch down the face of the zipper basically, which is this half curve. So for that, I already have created a curve here and I will search this entire piece around here now, except for this long edge. So this first piece is now searched. For this second piece, I'm going to flip it inside out first, and then I'm going to search this part down here first. I'll turn it around, lay it flat, give it a press, and now we have the two pieces prepared as far as we need them. Now this zip is obviously way too long for the zipper facing, which means I'm just gonna mark the opening as long as I need it to be. So this is how much I'll shorten the zipper in the end. Now I can grab my trousers. I'll put these two things aside and I'll grab this one for starters. This piece will go on the right side. So when we end the trousers on the right side of the zipper, place a few pins. And now I will sew this down. All right, so this is how far we are. Now I can turn this around so I can see the inside of this section. Open this back up, making sure I can access it well. Then I'll grab my zipper and I'll place it onto the section so that the zipper is facing down. I can now go ahead and stitch it down. I'll now close my zip off with my machine. This works because it's a very soft plastic zipper. Don't do this with a metal zipper. Now I can cut the rest off. Now I'll give this a second stitch closer to the teeth of the zip. I'm now pinning the other side of the zipper along the other side of the opening of my center front. All right, so the zipper is in. 
Now next I'm gonna sew the decorative seam on the facing. And the last thing to do is this part here, which arguably goes on like this. I'm gonna close this again. And I'm gonna do it so that the nice overturned side is facing down towards the end of the zipper. And now I'm going to serge this part. All right, and now hopefully that did the trick, which it seemed it did. And we can press it. Success! They fit perfectly actually um they're a bit hard to get in but once i'm in they look really good um so very happy about that so now it's about final touches it's about adding the waistband um serging the inner seams and then attaching the pockets in the back where they're supposed to be somewhere here <laughs> and doing them and then we're done Alright, so progress has been made. I attached the back pockets again. The fly zip is obviously in and I also top stitched um, the upper part of the side seams up until about where the pocket ends. And I also already did the hem, which means the trousers are basically finished except for the waistband. So that is what I am going to work on next. Okay, so for the waistband, I do have two of these strips here, which reach around the waist and have a little bit of ease attached to it as well, because what I'm planning to do is to have a extended waistband here where I can place the button. I'm just grabbing these two. And for starters, I'm going to place them right sides touching. Now I'm going to sew around the waistband and I'm gonna try to exactly go where the squares meet to have a really, really clean look from the outside. So I'm gonna sew this L shape all the way down the upper half of my waistband and then I'm gonna leave this side open for now. That was a game of chicken with the bobbin thread and I won. <laughs> This is exactly where it ended. Perfect. All right, so we now have a waistband. I'm going to pop this left sides touching, so on the inside of my trousers, with the edge of the waistband and the edge of the zipper facing of the zip fly being flush. That's where I'm gonna start pinning. All right, so I just took this to my iron. I just simply folded it over and under by one centimeter and then I started pinning around the waist so I can top stitch it. But before I do, I'm going to open the waistband here on the other side and I'm gonna place the two sides, right sides facing and then I'm going to sew this shut. And then the bottom here is ready to be top stitched closed. And then once that is done, we are finished with the trousers. And the last thing to do is to sew the button.